Let us now show the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all knowledge, thank you for the gift of human intellect. You have given us minds that have the capacity to discover the mysteries of creation from the greatest forces of the universe to the smallest particles of matter. You have blessed us with the ability to use language to express thoughts and to discuss the relationships between individuals, groups, and nations. We are truly, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Bless our grade 9 students as they consider their pathway into high school. May they be open to all of the opportunities offered at Archbishop O'Leary to help them reach their full potential. On this evening dedicated to the Advanced Placement Program, help inspire those students gifted with academic aptitude to explore this great opportunity to further develop their gifts. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Word of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Marcus Cleveland, and I am of Italian-Canadian descent in Treaty 6 territory. My name is Ariana Anderson, and I am from Sada Lake Cree Nation in Treaty 6 territory. I'd like to acknowledge and honor the languages, ceremonies, and cultures of this, the traditional land of Treaty 6, and the home of Métis Nation of Alberta Region 4. We honor all our ancestors who came before us and who made significant sacrifices to ensure our lands and cultures rich survival. I encourage you to take time to reflect on this phrase and we have inherited from our ancestors and will carry forward for future generations. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the river flows. As principal of Archbishop O'Leary High School, I have to say one of the great components of our course offerings is the Advanced Placement Program. The reason for this is pretty simple. Students coming into high school always have dreams, dreams of bigger things beyond the scope of their high school experience. And the Advanced Placement Program is one that prepares students for that eventuality of moving towards a university experience. As students are going through their high school experience, the number one thing that they are doing is they are making preparations for what that next chapter in their life will look like. And in order to do that, you need to engage in academic rigor that's going to challenge you and prepare you for what that world will be like when you transition to the university experience. We're really excited to be able to offer the wide scope of advanced placement programmings that we have here at Archbishop O'Leary. And Mr. Clintberg, who is our department head of the advanced placement program, is going to share a little bit more about this great program for our prospective students. The advanced placement program at Archbishop O'Leary offers so many opportunities for our most academic students. It is about reaching their full potential during the three years here at O'Leary, but beyond that, it is building them up for success in post-secondary. I hope by the end of the presentation you're about to watch, you're going to have an idea of just how many of those opportunities are available, and you get excited about joining us in the advanced placement classes at O'Leary. So in the presentation tonight, we're going to look at four major areas. First of all, we'll talk a little bit about what the AP program itself is. Second, we'll look at the benefits for our students, not just now while they're at O'Leary, but also into the future when they reach post-secondary. Third, we'll talk briefly about the courses that are available at O'Leary. And fourth, we'll go over some of the myths and misconceptions that are out there, because I do want people to have the best correct information while they're making choices about something like advanced placement. Beyond what you're going to see in this presentation, I do also invite you to visit the Archbishop O'Leary AP specific website at bit.ly forward slash AOLAP. We certainly have a lot of information there for our current students, of course, but there is also information for prospective students and their parents. So I invite you to look there. Also, there are links that will let you contact me by email. And if you have any extra questions after this presentation, you could certainly ask me. Uh, if there's even a lot of detailed information you need, we could set up like a Teams meeting or something like that to try to get your questions answered. So let's start off then with talking a little bit about what is advanced placement. Because I think what a lot of people think is that this is just like honors classes or something and that there's no benefit to it. Not at all. The advanced placement program is really set up around this idea of getting students to reach a point by their end of their three years of high school that they're accomplishing things at a level that would be equivalent to about what a first year university student would be doing. And that's great because it prepares them so much for that transition to university, a jump that a lot of students actually have difficulty with. 
The entire advanced placement program is overseen by the college board. This is an organization based out of the United States. And if you've ever heard of students from the US writing something called SATs, these exams that they write in high school as a part of their admission process to college, that's the college board. It's actually made up of representatives from colleges and universities, primarily from North America, but from other parts of the world as well, that basically oversee things like that. But they also do run the advanced placement program because when they were looking at the kinds of material that students were doing in first year university courses, they realized that a lot of them were doing almost that level of work while still in high school. So the question was, what else could they do to reach that first year university level? That's how the curriculum for the AP classes is created. And that's the one that the college board sets for us. Now, one thing I always point out very strongly about this is that our first obligation to our students is to make sure that they meet all the requirements of their Alberta curriculum. And in fact, that is the only curriculum that we can use when we're coming up with their report card marks. So a student in an AP class compared to a student in a regular class, they're writing the same exams, they're doing the same labs, all that sort of stuff. They'll actually get the same mark that they would in an AP class on their Alberta report card mark as any other kid would get. The extra material that's part of doing advanced placement, that is additional. But because our AP classes are filled with academic students, they can usually go a little bit quicker. They don't have to spend so much time kind of rolling back on material and going over it again and again and again. And that allows them to do some of that extra enrichment material to really make sure that they're doing the best they possibly can. And to be honest, not getting bored. That extra material quite often at the discretion of the individual teachers in those courses can even be for like bonus marks. That actually gives a student in the AP class a chance to do better than they would have done in the regular class. The College Board also creates what are called the AP exams. I'm going to talk a little bit more about those later, but they are the exams that are used as the benchmark to see at the end of the entire set of courses the student has to do during their three years of uh, high school at O'Leary if they've accomplished that first year sort of level. And there is us, of course, the high schools. We're the ones that actually have to administer these programs. So if a teacher is going to be teaching an AP class, they have to create a syllabus that makes sure that it covers all the requirements of both the Alberta curriculum and the College Board's advanced placement requirements. And that's submitted to the College Board for approval to make sure that we're doing everything that we have to do. Then the students do their courses, just like they were signed up for any other course. So a student might be in English 10-1 AP in their second semester of grade 10. And then in grade 11, they take English 20-1 AP. And then in grade 12, they do English 30-1 AP. Now, those students are still going to write their diploma exams because, again, remember, we have to follow all the requirements for an Alberta diploma. But they will also write the special AP exams. Those exams are administered during the first two weeks of May. That way, there's no conflict with any of the diploma exams. The AP exams are marked on a five-point scale. Everybody, of course, wants to get the high marks like a four or five because those are the marks that are required to get that university credit. Some programs actually do also accept a three. Those marks aren't as hard to get as you might think, because it's not like a four means you got 80% or something. It's marked on sort of like a bell curve. So actually you're getting a mark based on your performance compared to other students that are in the AP program, basically across North America. Now, another thing that can really worry students here is that, well, what if I do badly on these AP exams? Isn't it going to bring down my school mark or isn't it going to make universities think I did badly? No, not at all. Remember, the report card mark that you're going to get from us is based on Alberta content. So it has nothing to do with these AP exam marks. And when universities see the AP marks from the exams, they're actually totally happy if a student didn't get as high a mark because they know that that student is still better prepared for their first year of university and they're going to do much better because 
first year university is going to be more like an upgrade for them. So nothing is held against the students if they don't perform well on an AP exam. The only thing that can happen is the benefits of things like potentially earning those university credits. So the second section that we're going to look at are benefits to our students. And remember, we're looking not just at the benefits here at O'Leary, but also into the future, into their post-secondary life. So at O'Leary, why would a student want to take these AP classes? I think probably the best first thing that we have to consider is being surrounded by like-minded students. And what I mean by that is that um, when our students are in AP classes, surrounded by other academic students that are, you know, in that sort of 80% plus range of success, you know that they're going to be serious about doing the work that's being offered to them in the class. And that means that the classes can move at a bit of a faster pace. That doesn't mean that there's not opportunities to ask questions or double check things and stuff like that. But the pace does increase because you're not having to necessarily help a range of students that is much larger, where there's a lot of students that might be struggling in the material. The other great thing is that because you're working with other students that are academic, you can turn to somebody else in the class, ask a question because you're not sure what's going on, and they will be able to help you. There is so much peer-to-peer -peer support that we see in those classes. The accelerated completion of courses and diplomas is quite specific to some of the uh, courses that we've got. Uh, the best example of it is math. If you're doing AP math, you do your math 10C AP while you're in grade 10. And then in grade 11, you complete math 10, or sorry, 20-1 AP in first semester and math 30-1 AP in the second semester still of grade 11. That actually means that you write your Alberta diploma exam at the end of grade 11. That means it's done. It's out of the way. And what that allows us to do is have those math students in grade 12 focus on either AP calculus or AP statistics. And that's the course that they're going to be writing the AP exam for, not a math 30 course. The second chance on diploma marks is very cool um, because if a student has completed something like English 30-1 AP and they wrote their diploma exam and their class plus diploma exam blended mark on their Alberta transcript is like 82%. Great. That's a fantastic mark. But then they go and they write the AP exam, the English AP exam. Most universities will look at that AP exam and they'll translate it to a percentage, like a four, for example, is an 86. So if a student got a four on their AP exam, 86 will replace their entire Alberta transcript mark because it's the higher mark. So that's why we say it's a second chance on your diploma marks. The other thing that I really would want to stress to people is that they need to look at everything that O'Leary has to offer beyond the AP classes that they're going to be taking. Because we have so many other things like our sports teams, drama, music, the fitness center, CTS programs, all of those things that aren't AP that give such a, um, a, a rich, diverse experience that our students can have while at O'Leary. And because of the size of our school and the number of programs we can offer, that's something that you're not necessarily going to find at other smaller high schools. Now, post-secondary. Student finishes grade 12, they've done their AP courses. How is that helping them? Again, first and foremost, they are better prepared for university. We know that the transition from grade nine to grade 10 is a pretty big jump and, you know, can definitely cause some anxiety for students. The jump from grade 12 to university is quite a bit greater. And the reality is that there's a lot of students that simply drop out during their first year of university. They can't handle the pressure of it. They're not used to the level of academic rigor that's being asked of them. That's not true of the AP students, or at least not as much so, because they've always been pushing themselves to do the best that they can in the most academically challenging program that our school has to offer. Um, it's been shown statistically, the chances of an AP student dropping out during their first year is 
quite significantly lower, and their GPA throughout their years at university has been shown to be higher. The transfer credits, that's a special thing because the student does have to get a high enough mark on their AP exam to get the transfer credits, typically a four or five. But if they do, that means that as they enter whatever university they're going to, because the AP program is recognized at over a hundred countries worldwide, their university transcript first day of university will show that they already have credit in that 100 level of that course. Now, the crazy sounding thing is, I actually sometimes advise students to decline that credit because let's say a student is going to be going pre-med. And so um, in their first year, of course, they're going to have to do some biology courses. Don't take the credit in that 100 level bio course that you might have earned credit from doing the AP biology course. Instead, decline the university credit, take the first year biology 100 level course at university, you're going to ace it because you've seen it all before and that's going to raise your GPA. So that's the advice I give lots of students about the transfer credit thing. Finally, university admission. When students are applying to places, like for example, the University of Alberta, right in the application, there's a box to check if you've been an AP. They want to know that students are prepared for what's going to be coming at them in university. There's also a lot of universities across Canada that are starting to look at a more competitive admission process, like you see in the United States, where it's not just the marks that you're presenting, but it's also things like showing proof of being in the most academically rigorous program that your university had to offer. And then there's the special standing that you get. If a student has completed at least three AP exams or more, and they get marks of three or higher in those exams, they actually count as what is known as an AP scholar. They're recognized by the college board that way. It'll appear on their college board transcript. Now, again, this is something universities notice, especially, for example, colleges in the United States, if a student is traveling down there. Also, if a student is an AP scholar, O'Leary will give them a special $500 cash scholarship at the end of grade 12 for accomplishing that level. Beyond that, we do also have the AP capstone program at O'Leary. And if a student has completed that, they get what's called the AP capstone certificate. Lots of universities will give some sort of 100 level special credit towards completing that. Um, and then also, if a student completes capstone along with at least four other AP courses, they get what's called an AP capstone diploma. Again, further recognition from the college board that'll show up on their transcript that is sent to colleges and universities. Next, let's talk a little bit about the courses that a student can take at Archbishop O'Leary in the AP program. One thing I will point out before I start going through this list is that one thing you will not see is AP Social Studies. And that's because you have to remember that the College Board, the organization that oversees AP, is based in the United States. So all of their Social Studies courses are United States Social Studies. What I would recommend to students that are going into the AP program is that they seriously consider looking at the fast track social program that Archbishop Leary offers, where a student completes social 10, 20, and 30 all in their grade 10 year. So it is a full year course, but it's really great as a way to get through all of that content while they're in their first year and also get a diploma out of the way, even while in grade 10. So for AP courses, in CTS, we offer computer science. This program's a little bit different than some of the other AP courses, only because a student doesn't have to choose computer science when they're going into grade 10 at the AP level. Instead, it's when they're going into grade 11 and grade 12, that's where they would take the AP computer science. In fine arts, we have studio art drawing. This is a really in incredible program because what the student actually does over their three years in the program is develop a entire portfolio that has a common theme that they kind of get some help from, from their art teacher to try to figure out that shows the development of their work during their three years as they get that portfolio prepared. In the humanities, we have English. This is really an awesome course that I think all AP students should be taking only because you think about just about 
any program or faculty that they're going to be going into post-secondary, they pretty much all require that students take a 100 level English course. So even if they don't take the transfer credit in the course, they've seen so much of the writing style and the expectations that are going to be placed on them for when they get to that 100 level course that they're going to do great. And better yet, if they do earn the transfer credit and they don't have to take the 100 level English course, it frees up their schedule a little bit. In math, like I'd said earlier, there's a focus in grade 12 on either AP Calculus or AP Statistics. Either one of these programs can fit with what a student might be planning post-secondary. The one that is definitely more famous, let's say, especially to parents, is Calculus. Math 31 is what they're thinking of there. But remember also that Math 35 AP, Statistics, is a great fit for a lot of faculties and definitely something the students should be looking at by the time they get to their grade 12 year. In the sciences, we have biology, chemistry, and psychology. You won't see any physics there, only because it is a slightly different program, but we do offer the opportunity for students that are doing physics 20 and physics 30 to challenge physics 1 and physics 2, the special AP courses that are available in those areas. But biology and chemistry are definitely more popular than physics, so that's why we're offering them. And AP Psychology is actually our most popular AP course in all of Archbishop O'Leary. Uh, it's open to either grade 11 or grade 12 students because it's just a one semester course. And in five credits of time, you actually get six credits on your Alberta transcript because it counts for the requirements in Alberta for Psychology 20 and 30, as well as when a student goes on to university, it can be used um, as part of going into a program in either the arts or science faculty. And then there's AP Capstone, which I'd mentioned briefly before. It's a program open to our grade 11s and 12s. The AP Seminar 25 is the course they would take in grade 11, and AP Research 35 is the course they would take in grade 12. The purpose of this program in grade 11 is to show the students how they would have to set up real research level uh, kind of work at university. So the idea being that, you know, if you're trying to do research, you can't just go on Wikipedia, look at some stuff that some other people said and claim, hey, this is valid. It's the whole process of how do you actually uh, choose sources that are reliable? How do you come up with your own hypothesis of something? Um, how do you then approach doing your own research on that topic? How do you make sure that you're ethically performing that research? And them presenting your work, whether it's as a paper or through some other means. In grade 11, when they're doing the seminar course, it's learning all of those skills. And then when they get to grade 12, each student picks their own research topic and goes through that entire process of actually building their own research. Last thing that I want to cover in this presentation are some of the myths that actually surround the AP program. Now, this might be based on things that you've heard from someone else. It could also be because of something I've even mentioned so far in the presentation that you start making an assumption about. So first of all, marks. There's this idea that for a student to get into the AP program, they have to have marks like in the 90s or something. I've even had situations where a student is uh, showing me their marks from grade nine and they've got marks of like 96% in a subject. And they say, well, I just don't know if I'm good enough to be an AP. And I would ask then, well, what do you think is good enough then to be an AP? Honestly, what we recommend for most students coming from grade nine is that they're an honors level student then they should be an AP. So that means that by a lot of ways of kind of measuring that, probably a mark around 80% or so is considered honors. I would even say though, if a person is about 75% or higher, then yeah, they should be an AP. Another concern about marks is when they actually get into high school is, well, why should I be taking AP? Because it sounds like it's tougher and that means that I should just take the regular class and do better and get higher marks that would be completely against our philosophy of how we're running AP at O'Leary if we were actually going to penalize our best students for being an AP. What you have to remember is that 
again, the main goal that we have at O'Leary is to get you through the Alberta curriculum. That's legally what we're required to do. So when we put you through these AP classes, you're still being assessed the same way that a regular student would in the regular courses. You still write the same exams, you do the same labs, things like that. And anything that you do that's going to be AP content, that'll be added on as like a bonus question or something like that. And in fact, what we find is that because the students in the AP classes have those opportunities to do the bonus work that a student in a regular class doesn't get to do, they actually have the opportunity to get a higher mark in the AP classes than they would have in the regular class. Then people say, well, it sounds too hard. And, you know, I bet nobody passes these exams and no one gets the university credit. Well, the courses are more difficult than the regular ones because that's kind of the whole idea is getting yourself the best prepared you possibly can be for university. There are definitely students that do earn the university credit. Otherwise, it wouldn't even be something that we would pay attention to. But remember, even there, I said that I often advise students to actually decline that credit, depending on the program they might be in. And also keeping in mind that, you know, really, if the AP stuff is somewhat more difficult for you, well, you're still going to get your mark on your Alberta transcript based on the material that you covered that's part of the regular Alberta curriculum. So you're still going to get the mark you would have gotten in the regular classes. Another thing people say is I don't want to take all AP classes. And the response to that is, okay, don't. The great thing about the AP program is you get to pick and choose exactly what you want to do. Let's say you're really strong in the sciences, but not so great in English. So take AP science, but take regular English. Those choices are up to you. And it's the idea that you get to build a program that fits you the best. What about universities? Won't they look at those AP exam marks and hold it against me when I try to get admission into university? Like I said before, it's the exact opposite. They're looking at it and saying, wow, you tried AP? We already know that you're going to be better prepared for when you get to university. And if you did get that four or five on the AP exam, well, the university has to do a little bit of extra paperwork because you earned that AP transfer credit. Honestly, they do not hold it against you. The other thing is universities don't care about AP. Again, the exact opposite, because they know that those students are better prepared. That's why they have things like those specific scholarships that are available only to AP students to try to entice them to come to their university because they know these are going to be the best students in those universities. And then I hear things like, well, I know someone, it was a friend of mine who's a year ahead of me and they took AP and then they switched to regular program in grade 11 and they did much better. Okay. Yeah, that can happen. And the thing that I point out is yes, you can do that too. You could be in the AP program in grade 10. And if it doesn't seem to be the best fit for you, maybe because the course is a little bit accelerated to get through some of that extra material and that's causing you some difficulties, then take the regular course when you get to grade 11. That's okay. But the idea that you've at least given it a shot and you've tried it in grade 10 means that again, you're trying your best to get better prepared through your three years of high school. And also considering where some students will say, um, well, I'll just take the regular program in grade 10 and then I'll switch up to AP when I'm gra grade 11 or grade 12. That is much more difficult to do and much more rare, simply because if you haven't taken AP in grade 10, that means you're already behind on that extra material that the students that were in the AP class have already done. So that's something that is quite uncommon to happen and something that uh, really we do have to look at as an individual basis. Um, really start in the AP and then switch down if you need to. Well, I hope the information that you've heard me go through during this presentation has helped you out. And if you do have some other things that you want to check out, uh, first, I would suggest you do check our specific uh, AP website that we have for material at Archbishop O'Leary at bit.ly forward slash AOLAP. 
And if beyond that, you're having any other questions or difficulties or just something you wanted to try to clarify, certainly reach out to me, Brian Klimper, the AP coordinator, and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. Send me an email. We can maybe arrange a meeting in Teams, something like that. I'd be glad to help you out.